In this video, we're going to start looking at converting complex numbers from Cartesian and polar form to exponential form. We also express the following in the form r e to the i theta, where theta is between negative and positive pi, whilst to give exact, the exact values of r and theta where possible, or values two decimal places otherwise. The way I like to do this is just to sketch an argon diagram. We know that we've got the real axis and the imaginary axis, and just to sort of get some idea of our argument from here. So this is a real axis, real z, and then we've got the imaginary axis, imaginary z. So on our first one, minus 3 is a real number, so it's on a real axis, and it's out here. Quite clearly, r, which we know to be the absolute value of z, in this case is going to be 3. The argument is going to be pi radians. We can see that quite clearly. So we can say arg z, which we have as theta, is going to be equal to pi radians. So we could write this now, and they've written in the form r e to the i theta. You could write it now as follows. You could write z is equal to r, which is 3, e to the i theta. I would prefer to write to the pi i. But of course, you can write z is equal to 3 e to the i pi. Just out of interest now, if we consider the following, what we've said is minus 3 is equal in exponential form to 3e to the i pi. If we divide both sides by 3, we can see negative 1 is equal to e to the i pi, which is something that you might have seen or worked with before, which is one of the most famous results in maths. And we can see that that's going to sit just there. OK. Let's now look at the next one. We've got 6i, and that's going to be just here. So this is on the imaginary axis. So we can see quite clearly we're going to have a value of r of 6. That's 6. We can see that the argument, arg z, so arg z, is going to be equal to pi by 2. So we can now write this as z is equal to 6e to the pi by 2i. Now, let's just think about this right here. This is not too dissimilar to the polar form. We can write polar form as r, which is 6, cosine of theta, which in this case is pi by 2, plus i sine of theta, which is pi by 2. This is exponential. This is polar. Now, if we think about this, z is going to be equal to 6. The cosine of pi by 2 is 0. The, uh, the sine of pi by 2 is 1, so we end up with this scenario right here, which gives us z is equal to 6i, which of course is the Cartesian form. So exponential, Cartes uh, polar, and then Cartesian. So we've looked at going from Cartesian to exponential to polar and back to Cartesian. So hopefully now you can work between the three. Okay, let's look at this one. Now this one right here, if I drew an argon diagram, I'll show you the position of this one. Let's have a think. That's going to be somewhere down here, isn't it? Uh, so it's going to be somewhere at this point right here. So we're going to have now something looking a bit like this. The way I like to think about the argument is now is to take the absolute value of the, uh, the inverse tangent of this. I want to kind of stress in this video, I'm not teaching you how to find um, the argument as such. You have your own ways of finding it uh, in, in terms of your trig, do exactly the same. The way that I would see this now is that this is the inverse tangent of y over x. The twos and the negatives are cancelling, so we have one over root three. So what I'm thinking to myself now is that the angle that this is making with the, imagine, uh, with the negative real axis, it's going to give us a pi by 6 angle. So what we've got then is the tan is going to be 1 over root 3, which means that's 2. So all I'm going to do is minus pi plus now this value right here, which is going to be pi by 6. So we can see that theta is going to be negative pi by 6. It's entirely up to you on how you want to view that. For me, that's the way I would do it. But please, use your own method. OK, now if we look at the modulus, the absolute value, we know that r is going to be equal to the square root of x squared 
plus y squared. Before that was simplified, it would be root 12. So what we're looking for then is the square root of root 12 squared, or negative root 12 squared, which is 12. And if we square negative 2, we're going to get plus 4. So from this, we can see r is going to be equal to the root of 16, which is 4. So we can now express this as z is equal to now r, which is going to be 4, e to the minus 5 pi by 6 i. And that is the exponential form. If you wanted to write it in polar form, 4 cos of negative pi by 6 plus i sine of negative 5 pi by 6. OK. Let's go for another one. Let's go for this one here, because this looks like it's going to yield a bit of a messy answer. If we consider this now, we're minus 8, and then we've got uh, plus i. So it's going to look something like that. It's going to be over here. If we first think about the modulus, remember, the modulus r is going to be equal to the absolute value of z, which is the square root of x squared plus y squared. So if I square negative 8, what we're going to get then is 64. If I square 1, I'm going to get 1. So we can see that r is equal to the root of 65. The root of 65 won't simplify. It's 3 times by 15. Both those are prime. So we can say now that r is going to be equal to the root of 65. OK, now to find the argument. And again, you take your pick on how you want to do this. What I like to think about is pi plus the inverse tangent. So all I like to think about now is I'm starting here at pi, OK? So we're going to be at pi, and I'm going to add this angle right here, knowing it's going to be negative. So if I do that, what we're going to have then is uh, pi plus the inverse tangent now of negative uh, 1 over 8 or 1 over negative 8. doesn't really matter. And this will give me now my argument. So all I'm doing, I know this is going to be negative, Therefore, I'm just going to be taking it off pi. And that gives us, and what we're going to, three dec uh, two decimal places, 3.02. So 3.02 radians is now our value of theta. So we can write this as z is equal to root 65, and then we're going to have e to the 3.02i. And that is expressed now in exponential form okay let's go on um no we don't want those ones do we we want no we want some more of these don't we in fact we'll do them down here i seem to have run out of them okay these ones are fairly straightforward we've seen how to convert back and forward between them so on this one and i introduced this last time this is something we need to be um slightly careful of we know that uh, a complex number can be written in the form r e to the i theta, that is now the exponential form. It can be written as r cosine of theta plus i sine of theta. And in the last video of the one before, I spoke about the even and odd nature of these. So this one's fairly straightforward. We can simply write this now as root 8, or 2 root 2, it's entirely up to you, e to the pi by 4i. That's nice and straightforward. We can just convert you can kind of see the similarities. So we could say z is going to be equal to that. Let's just consider this one, though. This one isn't as clear. We could write this now, z is equal to 8, and then we've got cosine of minus pi by 6 plus i sine of minus pi by 6. And I've used the fact that sine, and again, we looked at this before, sine of negative x is equal to negative sine of x, and the cosine of negative x is equal to the cosine of x. This is even, that's odd. So we could now write this one here as z is equal to 8e to the minus pi by 6i. So just be a bit cautious of those. And exactly the same with this one. We would write this one as z is equal to 2e to the minus pi by 5i, OK? Just be a bit wary when you see a negative in there that you can rewrite it in this form. So there we go. Uh, we've now looked at converting from polar and Cartesian into exponential form.